Okay, so Game of Thrones, Season 8. Uh, the whole thing has come to an end. But a lot of people have been disappointed with the way that Season 8 went. And understandably so. So I'm going to go through a few different things and drop some of my own theories. And there will be spoilers. So, you know, if you're not looking for spoilers, then I'll just <laughs> watch it yourself. But, um, is it worth it? Um, I don't know. That's the question. Right, so, season 8. Obviously, at the time that they had to record this, um, the rest of the seasons had been based on the George R. R. Martin books, and, you know, they'd been published, they could follow the plots and the intricacies and all the stuff like that that was going on, and show a lot of the stuff you know, with side plots and different things going on. Now, season eight, they had to do it themselves. So the plot writers themselves, you know, the show people, had to think how are they going to end it themselves. And every other season has had ten episodes. This one has had six, which maybe also suggests that they really didn't know how to end it. So they literally just abruptly ended every single plot line that was going on was like, that's the end. Not only that, a lot of the characters didn't have their developments that were going on. So a lot of people have been noting that like characters' personalities have just completely flipped and, you know, a lot of the stuff that was going on has just been completely ignored. And I would completely agree with that with most of the characters, like, they were completely different people in season 8 to who they had been, and it just didn't really work out, and the, the the last episode especially, oh my god, that finale was just ridiculous! <laughs> Not only with the way that things just ended abruptly, you know, with with certain things, you know, I'll go into that a bit later. But also, a lot of it was just politi political, you know, talkings and political conversations and really dry and not really a good ending. And it's like, you know, the path of democracy. Mm, yes, let's, let's just stop the end of the people being kings and lines, you know, we nominate them now. And like, should we get all of the public to the, ha ha ha, would you think, should we just allow the horses and the, the, the other things here, yeah, and the dogs to vote? No, it's like, <laughs> just a little cringy in that aspect, you know, that, that just wasn't entertaining in my opinion. And, you know, there's a lot of other things that were just so wrong with it that, no. That last season was just ridiculous. Okay, so we'll go into some of the plots that were developing in season 6 and season 7. So in particular, I'm going to go over Arya's one, for starters. So Arya Stark was obviously off on her adventures, you know, with the many-faced gods. And, you know, she had had to pledge her life. And, you know, she essentially gave her life to the many-faced gods. And that was under the promise that her kill list would be fulfilled. So, you know, she had given her life. And she had to take a poison, which blinded her. But, you know, was also the faith test. Because that water was actually poison that killed the person. And the many-faced god, everyone that had served the many-faced god was just a face on the wall. And it was just a face that the many-faced god wore in their personalities. So, you know, they were able to switch their personalities out. Because, you know, it wasn't actually ever the person anymore. It was just the many-faced gods wearing their personality. And... Arya had tried to escape it, and she was being pursued by the one lady, you know, the female many-faced gods. And whilst they said that off-screen, you know, she'd taken care of her in the previous season, I don't think she really did, you know? Um, I think there was no escape from that, and maybe Arya had actually been taken out off-camera and, you know, in exchange for her services, because she had, you know they had offered or you know the bargain was that her soul and her life was in exchange for her killers being fulfilled and ever since she had returned to Westeros you know her demeanor and her personality was off like she was the face being worn by that one girl because she was acting a lot more like the one 
of a servant girl than she was herself. So, you know, I, I was expecting the revelation to be that it would be, her kill list would be fulfilled, but at the same time, you know, her face would end up on a pan past all of the faces on the many face wall, on the many face gods wall, and it would just be Arya's face on the wall. Because that's, you know, clearly what's going to happen. And obviously, yes, there was the destiny to fulfil because she would kill many different eyes. And yes, that was blatantly obvious when it was first suggested that she was going to be taking out White Walkers. Not necessarily the, the leader of the White Walkers, but, you know, she'd be involved in the defence of all the White Walkers. So that's how I feel like Arya's quest should have ended. But they obviously wanted to keep her alive and, you know, have spin-offs and all of this of her adventures to America and, you know, whatever would entail from that. But, <laughs> I don't know, in season eight she just seems so off and obviously the the writers wanted to see her boobs, so um, they gave her a sex scene. <laughs> You know, maybe she felt awkward about it, but she's got a good body and, you know, she shouldn't be ashamed of that. But, yeah, I mean, you know, clearly they just wanted to give her a sex scene and, you know, it's noted that she was like, are you kidding? Because um, apparently they used to send, like, fake scripts and stuff to, to joke them out. And she didn't think that it was actually going to be happening, but no, it happened. And, like, uh, just just the entire plot of it just seems so off. And, you know, the fact that she survived the burning of everything as well, you know, that was a very unusual sort of scene whilst everything around her got burned. But she survived the fire. I don't know. It's like, you know, if everything was being burned around her and she's the only one that didn't get turned to ash, was there some sort of special significance to that as well? Is it because she was already dead? I don't know. And um, on the subject of other characters that were developing certain things in their aspects so the gold-handed Lannister he's not Tyrion I don't know his name though I'm terrible with names in real life as well as in fiction but yeah Mr. Goldhand he was going down the redemption arc where he was actually getting with Brienne of Stark and he was he realized that he actually loved her and so the plot line was developing through that and yes whilst he did go down to the the castle with his sister to get it on he did that to try and manipulate his sister to send her forces up north to protect the wall and protect the kingdom you know to protect everyone against all the white walkers to increase the chances of Brienne surviving because with all of these forces there was a better chance of her surviving and her living so he was doing that purely to manipulate her at the time but in season eight, it's just like, no, he's just an asshole and he just wanted to be with his sister and, you know, didn't care any about that. And even though he was still, you know, doing things with Brienne and, you know, he made her a knight and, you know, that was a touching scene. It's just like in the end of the day, he, he was just like, no, I'm just an asshole. And it's like, OK, you know, all the all the character development and all of that that you've done to have him realise his humanity from meeting her and you know he was actually then trying to ma manipulate his sister to protect her and doing these things for her which might not seem as obvious for her but they were done for keeping her alive <laughs> just out the window and that that just didn't feel right at all and it's just like could you not see what was going on with the plot development and character development there in that plotline no you just completely ignore that and you know that just went out the window as well and again the white walkers came there was the battle it was over <laughs> that's an episode <laughs> sure it's a big battle and you know in that as well though um yeah let's just look at all the forces i'm not going to show clips or anything but all the forces that went out so all the dothraki they went out with the first charge i mean she, surely, Daenerys, committed all of her forces to defending this as well. So all of the Dothraki were the first line, and they went out and charged all the White Walkers. They all got eliminated. All their torches went out. It was a big scene. They were all, all eliminated and wiped out entirely. Okay, they're gone. None remain. And, um, yeah... Okay, let's come back to that. And then it was all of the Unsullied, and all of the Unsullied 
defended and some got inside the walls, but not many. It was like, you know, one unit or something, you know, Grey Worms units. And all the rest had to defend and he made the difficult choice to cut their lines off. And so most of them were eliminated as well. And then when the walls were breached by all of the White Walkers, most of the North forces were also eliminated. So hardly anyone remained alive inside the castle walls. And they all started coming back as White Walkers. And, you know, it was a big scene where... It's, they're all in trouble, but then Arya took out the leader and all of them just died. But, going forward, all of a sudden, all the units are all back. Like, Daenerys has huge armies of Unsullied again, and Daenerys has huge armies of Dothraki again, which, after defeating everything in the end of the Battles of the War, millions of Dothraki, loads and thousands and thousands of Unsullied, the, the, that have come from nowhere and are all defending the castle again. It's like, well, where did you get all these forces from? You know, because they're all located overseas and, you know, boats require to get any more if they were to get reinforcements. You know, if if they're reinforcements, that's one thing. But the fact is that she'd committed them all to defending that one place. And it's like, no, no, you can't just have all these Dothraki horsemen and all of the unsullied just queued up again and no that's not right at all that that's just complete bullshit that you've got these armies back from the dead and it just didn't make sense it did not make sense you know it's like when there was the scene where there was a small unit of them with i thought they were the only survivors left you know what i mean because there was daenerys and then there was the gold-haired lady uh, names defeating me in Melisandre where they decapitated her and her last words were Dracarys which is obviously you know make them all suffer let them burn you know that was clearly her last wish and that's a big hint as to why you know Daenerys ignored attempts for peace at the end but again, you know, that wasn't really her way. Her way was always punish the guilty only and free the slaves and have the slaves come on your side. And, you know, any armies that were there also always turned to her side and she converted any leftover armies to her side so that she would have, you know, not enemies on her radar. She would always have, you know actual companions so where these leftovers had joined her army their kin and their kingdoms would all have a uh, oh you know they'd owe her something and you know they would owe her allegiance and they would have to bow before her and she would incorporate their kingdoms through that so the fact that she ignored that was out of character and completely off the line third person that has developing plot lines was the advisor who had no balls because it was always stated that his balls were removed and he was destined to die through betraying the true leader and whilst he did betray Daenerys and ended up dying she wasn't the true leader in the end, according to the plot and the way that the things developed, was she? You know, she never truly got thrown because she was betrayed and killed. And um, in a most unceremonious way and the most shit <laughs> scene ever imagined. It's like, yeah, no, that, that wasn't a good scene. No, that wasn't entertaining or wasn't even a miraculous twist it was just stupid in my opinion <laughs> it's just really really pathetic but yeah i mean he was supposed to have some magical essence that was when he betrays her he would combust and you know return to his balls he would be reunited with his balls through the act of betrayal not anything else there would be a magical bonds that would be broken that would re you know, through him breaking that and betraying that is what would have completely made a magical ending to him, not being burnt in the way that he was, because that that really didn't fit the the plot lines that had been a Game of Thrones sort of plot lines that that really go. So you know that was also just just completely wrong, and I expect 
I don't know if the the final books have been released yet or what. Or, you know, any of these details are out. But I'm just saying that, you know, I'm going to expect in the book a lot of these things to be more like what I'm suggesting is going to go down than what happens in the TV series. Because cause that was just completely off. And, yeah, no, it just felt completely wrong to me. And, yeah, so there are other spoilers that I could do. And, you know, I can go into a few other things. But I feel like, for the most part, just it was just such so wrong and you know the the ending you know with him trying to escape with his sister underneath and you know the boats and everything uh, I don't know I just feel like it just all felt really wrong and they felt they had to do certain things which just seemed so completely out of character and a lot of the ways that the characters all died just felt anticlimactic and you know, it just didn't feel like Game of Thrones anymore. It didn't feel like all the other seasons of Game of Thrones, which had been really good and always, you know, had interesting twists and turns and intricacies. And, you know, they left a lot of threads for intricacies that were just ignored completely. And I also feel that Goldhand Man would have died in the North. You know, he was actually due to die in the North. And get betrayed by the one guy who was after all the money but the dwarf imp would survive that mm, that's that's just my feeling you know he would die defending Brienne of Tarth and you know after the celebrations maybe you know it would be at that point that he would have been assassinated because I don't know it just it just all felt wrong it just didn't feel right or satisfying and I just felt the ending in particular the whole of the end was just so anticlimactic and like I said with them doing so much of the nonsense with the oh yeah we're talking politics and all of this and nominating who we really want as king that also ignored any of the legitimacy of Jon Snow you know it's like Jon Snow was revealed to be the other Targaryen and you know whilst he then betrayed his sister it, it just ended up with him being sent to the north and then you know even though he was sent to be part of the um, Night Watch he actually ended up just marching out north with the other you know the true leader of the north the ginger haired big guy who was also in Sabriana and you know the fact that his love rival was eliminated. You'd think he'd be still interested in going after Brienne of Tarth, but no, they just ride off solemnly and, you know, he escapes the Night Watch, so he's not even facing his punishment. He's just going into the true north, you know, north of the wall. And, you know, they're just going out there to live. And, you know, he maybe has children out there as well. But, you know, maybe that's for another stupid spin-off shit. <laughs> And no, it just didn't feel right. And the, the you know, the the kingdoms never truly got reunited either. Even though Bran, who was no longer human, you know, he was in this non-human state who lived mostly in the past through his three-eyed raven sort of stuff. He ended up getting nominated to be king, and then it was like, oh, why else did I come here? And it was like he knew that he was going to do this all along, and it just. It, just didn't feel right and you know when his sister didn't support him being king she was still like well I'm still going to be in the north still going to be independent and it's like yeah 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 it's Scotland Scotland's still going to retain its independence despite the United Kingdom even though Ireland and Wales are also still their own things and that's not really addressed in this <laughs> it just felt uh, it just didn't feel right. It just felt so stupid and political and nonsense. And half of it, like, there was at least half an hour of drivel about political nonsense and shit. And that's like, that's almost half of the episode. And it's just like, <coughs> just felt so, so wrong. And no, I, I don't know. And, you know, it's like, after taking the kingdom, it was just like, a quick scene where she's not even suspecting that Jon Snow is going to betray her and, you know, she thinks, oh, we can be king and queen together. And then the dragon comes and just melts the Iron Throne. So it's like, you know, no one is king now. And it's like, great. That, that, there's, 
is there meant to be some sort of power behind that scene? Because I feel like not really. And also, Jon Snow was a Targaryen, so he'd probably be fireproof anyway, even if the dragon did burn at him, you know, he, he probably had that in him, especially as he had already, you know, died and been brought back to life. I don't know, it just, a lot of it felt so off compared to the whole of the rest of Game of Thrones and, you know, <laughs> I regret paying for a Now TV subscription to watch it, it's like, it was not worth it, it was the shittest season ever and did not feel anything like Game of Thrones. It felt like some sort of weird spin-off. And, you know, this is all my personal opinion, and these are my personal thoughts as to how those characters in particular had developing plot lines. And Daenerys was obviously destined to still be the true leader. And, you know, she had that goodness in her, and she was only there to, you know... I was cooking sausages after the one scene, and um, I left my sausages cooking too long, and they were sizzling and they, they were also screaming they were like <laughs> and I just thought you know with with the whole bell ringing scene I don't have a timer for my cooker or anything but it's like you know just it was a joke that I said I wanted to make on Twitter or something but I didn't want to do spoilers for anyone so it's just like um, you know when when you miss your alarm bell and your, your sausages end up overcooked and they're sizzling and screaming at you and it's just you know, that's, that's Daenerys igniting the whole of the kingdom after they've surrendered when the bells are ringing. And, yeah, and she didn't even care that she was melting her own forces as well. And, you know, it, it just seems pretty stupid that she was just melting everyone, everyone regardless. And then she was just ruler of rubble. You know, there was no one left to rule. You took the Iron Throne, but what were you king of or queen of? You know, you were queen of ashes at that point nobody was left alive it was just ash and you know you kill all these innocent people indiscriminately and that was completely out of character for her she'd only ever done it to liberate people and at this point that was out of spice and you know she could have literally just melted the queen and no one else and that would have still won you know melt the entire castle and you know, it it just felt so out of character and so completely wrong to me that that was going on. And like I was saying, the advisor that was due to betray her, you know, he'd probably betray her for Jon Snow, you know, the other Targaryen. And, you know, if he was never destined to be the true ruler and she was destined to be the true ruler, you know, maybe there's the whole they might get together and get married sort of thing that was establishing. But, you know, maybe ultimately he ends up deciding King of the North and all of that and you know maybe they have to have some sort of ultimate battle but I guess they didn't want to develop any new plot lines you know they were just shut it down shut it down shut it down the season's over shut everything off you know tie up any loose ends in the bluntest way possible and I don't know it, it just felt so wrong and I heard that apparently you know the book isn't even going to be the final book there's going to be yet another book after that so that would explain things but I guess they just wanted to end the season you know they they said oh it's going to be the final season so they had to stick with that and you know I I just feel it was wrong completely so that's my opinion anyway that'll do thanks for joining me join me again some more goodbye